Hey guys, we have uh, Richard Lid on the podcast. He is an excellent violinist, and I've been listening to him for a while now since my premature days. And yeah, to, I think just just to start talk talk whatever we want to talk about. And Richard, I'll leave the introduction to you. Can you just give a quick intro? Sure. Um, yeah. Um, hello, Brad, and it's uh, really nice to be here. And I'm. Um, Looking forward to, to our chatting. Um, so, uh, my name is Richard Lin. I was born in actually born in Phoenix, Arizona, but raised in Taiwan. And um, I started to learn violin when I was four. And the reason was because my dad really loves classical music. And when uh, during on my birthday, when I was four, my grandma gave me. A violin which has a gold um, tuner on the E string, and that's that make, makes the violin looks totally different from other half size violin. That's okay. why it gives me so it gave me so much interest to learn violin. That's why I started violin. And that's why you wore the gold suit for your Brahms concerto, the Michael Hill <laughs> concerto. Yeah, probably, yeah, that's why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then I study. Violin in Taiwan until when I was 16, I moved to the States, first to Oklahoma State, because my teacher then moved to Oklahoma to teach in OU. And then during that year, I got into Curtis and started my, yeah, sort of a professional violin career. Random question, do you 17. know, sorry to cut you off, do you know Gregory? Yeah, he's my teacher. Oh, no way. Yeah, he's, he's that, that person I, t I was talking about. Oh, okay, that's cool. Anyway, so I cut you off. I just so, I just, so you know him too. Yeah, well, he came to the uh, conservatorium here once in Brisbane, like six, seven years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I, I think I had a lesson or a master class with him. Oh, really? I can't remember? Yeah. Yeah, he's he, he's actually the the person who really changes my life, my musical life. Really. Wow, wow, small world. That's so funny. I just heard Oklahoma, and yeah. I, the only guy I know there is Gregory. Well, I'm, right. Yeah, I was like, great, oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. And um, just so you guys know some background information, I actually listened to a lot of Richard's recordings online like seven years ago. I, I just and then one of the concerts he did was the finals of the Michael Hill International Violin Competition, and he wore mm -hmm. this massive, just decked out in gold and a golden suit, <laughs> and I just thought that was so. <laughs> Awesome! I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's got this Brahms and gold, this Brahms concerto, right?" Um, anyway, that's how I kind of knew about Richard. Um, yeah, so what is it like? It's just I don't know, man. Like, I talk to so many solos and just performers at people at your playing at your level. Mm. When like, do you ever feel? Okay, let me put some context onto this. So recently, I had this opportunity to play the Mendelssohn Concerto with a small orchestra here, and I haven't performed in an orchestra with an orchestra for so long. Like for a solo, it'll be like at least four years, right? So I'm feeling really choppy, like ho 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 ho. And then I'm practicing. I'm I'm struggling. I'm like, man. And then I asked a few solos. I'm like, hey, how do you do this? They're, oh, I just 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 do this. I'm like, oh. Amazing, yeah, totally. Sounds so easy. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you ever have those blocks? Like, kind of just, I have these mini attacks, mini panic attacks. Like, oh my god, this is not possible. And well, you mean before, before? Yeah, while you're practicing the piece, I'm... do you freak out and go, "This, I don't know if I can get this on this concert day," or does that not occur to you? Oh, oh, well, it, ha it happens so so many times, especially during competitions, because. Usually I have um, my own concert schedule, and I really enjoy participating in competitions. So I Whoa. try to manage all the different repertoires and try to plan my um, practice plan to to get everything done before the actual performance. Mm -hmm. So these things does happen a lot. Wow. And usually it ha when I know it when 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 I have nightmares about. Um, being on stage, but discover that 
the piece actually wasn't the piece that I prepared. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I dream of、um, memory slips, <laughs> all, 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 all kind of bad things. So okay, so how do you cope with all this? I guess mentally, like the. I, I, sometimes I feel like I'm just. I don't know. I don't want to say the like, not like. Bipolar. I'm just like emotionally, like wow, like an emotional roller coaster with this thing. I'm like, and do you get that, or how do you handle it, type of thing? You know. Well, for me, the best way to overcome nervousness or、uh, how do you say it, afraidness, yeah, is through preparation. The more I prepared, I feel more secure, and yeah, just I just have to practice harder and <laughs> makes myself more、oh, confident because. <laughs> For me, I have to be in control of everything. That's that's the way to make myself comfortable. I think.、Mm -hmm. Okay, so、yeah. get control first, which I don't have. Okay, cool. <laughs> 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 it's number one, control.、Um, do you have any hobbies? Oh yeah, a lot. Well, first of all, I I love sports. Okay. It's not like I do a lot of sports, but、yeah. I love to watch basketball. And I, I was going to say basketball straight up. I don't know why. You just look. <laughs> Sorry, you just look. Yeah,、like、yeah I watch NBA for maybe more than fifteen years now,、oh, wow. and I also I also watch Major League Baseball. But recently, I develop a very interesting hobby. I think since two thousand sixteen, I I started to follow the. Watch trend, like watch hor horology. Horology. Yeah, especially mechanical watches. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I love watches. Wow! Oh, wow! 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 Okay, tell me more about. I think this is so way off topic, but. <laughs> so, also, so to, I don't know. So since two thousand sixteen, I started to 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 get you know like more.、Um, how do I how do I put this? Um, I was looking for a suit, actually, like、mm -hmm. uh, to to wear on stage,、mm -hmm. tuxedo stuff like that. And I try,、um, I try to learn more about the old tradition from England,、mm -hmm. like how you should wear your suit, and also the the leather shoe. You have several rules about which situation you should wear, what dress code, and stuff like that,、mm -hmm. like gentleman rules.、Mm -hmm. And then I started to look online to get. To get more knowledge and to look at more pictures and stuff, and suddenly watches pop popped out, and、mm -hmm. I was like, oh, because be before two thousand sixteen, I was like, why do people still watches, still wear watches? I mean, yeah. Cause, oh, cause it's, it's, it's like it's, everybody has a phone. Yeah, yeah, it's such a crazy market, actually, the watch thing.、Um, yeah, because I, because I I th I thought I thought watch will be. Um, dead by then, right? I don't know. Ex extinct. Extinct. Yeah. yeah. So, so, do you collect watches? I I don't. I don't have the money. <laughs> well, the <laughs> I was gonna I say. Those are really, really, really expensive. Yeah. Like you can buy a house for that. Oh my god. So yeah, tell me what kind、yeah. of watches you can buy a house. <laughs> well, well, I think everybody knows Patek Philippe, right? Yeah. But there, yeah, yeah. there are also a lot of、um, independent companies. They make watches and really, really rare watches,、mm -hmm. like、um, Richard Mille. Do you know Richard Mille? You know, I've heard of all these names. It's because I have a friend who sells watches.、Um, oh, he makes his own, and、nice. he loves watches as well. He knows a lot, and the only reason why I know the name particularly, or like、uh, I'm Adamo. Sure, I can't say the name. Order. Oh, you know? Audemars Audemars Piguet. Piguet, those、uh, those type of watches. AP. AP AP、uh -huh. yeah AP is because yeah, yeah. of my friends. So and it's interesting. I mean, I, see. I obviously don't have the money to get these watches, but I just, yeah, it's like yeah, a whole another、yeah. world. It's like as if someone never knew about the whole violin world of instruments or bows. And it's just like、mm -hmm. wow, this is something else. <laughs> this is right, right. Yeah. So I. I I discovered that the watches is very, actually very pretty. First of all,、mm -hmm. and also they're really meaningful. Like you,、mm -hmm. you can, you buy one, you wear it for forever for throughout your life,、mm -hmm. and then you can also pass down to your kids or grandkids as a as an heir.、Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and you know, time is really something that we still cannot change, right?、Mm-hmm. And timing, the, the passing of the time means a lot to a man. I think. Well,、mm-hmm. it's a really romantic thing for 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 man. I、mm-hmm. I, I feel like.、Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you ever play pieces and associate with watches? <laughs> so random. Ah.、Um... <laughs> Not really. I don't know. Like, maybe, maybe I will. Yeah, like you can associate a petite Philip concerto, <laughs> a, <laughs> a, cool. an AP sonata. <laughs> I don't know. That'd be pretty cool. Like, oh, imagine you got the, one of these guys to like sponsor you or something. Hey, that would be. Oh yeah, you know、oh. my my dream right now is to be a, um, how do you say it? Like a.、Uh, Spokes spokesperson spokesman ambassador, yeah 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 ambassador of like Rolex or oh okay thing you know Yu Jia Wang yeah she's a she's an ambassador of Rolex that's so cool dude the, and also um Lang Lang has a watch of Hublot no Hublot Hublot yeah Hublot what do you call so you so bad yeah yeah、so. that's how you pronounce Hublot yeah I actually、Hublot. went to a watch shop a few months、mm-hmm. ago actually was with my friend he dragged me in. I was kind of just like、mm-hmm. it's all everything's gold and glass luxury stores. I'm walking around, and I saw the what I saw the Lang Lang one. I'm like, wow, they made a watch <laughs> for him. I want one. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. And Ublo is also the sponsor for a World Cup. Wow, that's insane. Yeah. Well, there you go. They spend a lot of money doing commercials. I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, far out.、Yeah. All the expenses they had. No wonder the watch is so expensive. Yeah. But. I love how this whole topic is just becoming watches, but that's fine.、Um, <laughs> the mechanisms mechanisms of a watch, you know, like do you what distinguishes like the movements of the watches? You know, I because I have no idea to be honest. I know these、uh, what are the pieces? The pieces that Swiss what's the machine called inside kind of moves. Oh,、itself. the caliber, the caliber, the caliber. Yeah, is that the、uh-huh. default state? Default. Thing that pe- people use with these watches, these high-end watches. Well, most of the high-end watches use、uh, mechanical calibers.、Mm-hmm. Well, quartz quartz watches are very accurate, and it's more convenient for people who doesn't care about、um, the mechanism of a watch.、Mm-hmm. But to me, only mechanical watch are horology. Wow, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, cause, cause. Uh, for a mechanical watch, you have to have action with it. Like it's it's like you have to take care of it, and、mm-hmm. it grows with you, and、mm-hmm. it moves moves on if you if you live. Like it it has to live on your motion. Yeah. Especially auto- automatic watch. Yeah. Like when you wear it, if you wear it, it can goes on. But if you don't wear it, you put it down, it stops. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, and for for a quartz watch, you have to change battery every two. Two years, three years.、Mm-hmm. It's not part of yourself. Yeah, it just stops. So, right. right? Yeah, yeah. So for me, the, ro- the, the romance is between mechanical watch and and myself. Wow, that's so cool. Do you have、yeah. one? I do. I do. Um, in、uh, two thousand, I I actually had to have two. Yeah. And、um, watches are the proof of the effortness. You you know what I mean? Like during、mm-hmm. after a competition or before a competition, I usually set my phone wallpaper into a, a certain watch that's my goal,、mm-hmm. and then whenever I look at my phone, I have my motivation to practice. Oh, that's so cool! <laughs> yeah, <make> really? <laughs> oh, that's so、person. funny. Do you, you also do that?、Yeah. You also set stuff on your phone background. <laughs> yeah, it's on my computer background, phone background. Everything is watches. Wow. Uh, you know it's funny. I I also do that as well. I kind of、really? just for what? Just everything I do. I just sit, like a little. For example, um, <clears throat> let's say it's a one of our like a two set tour or something, right? I'm、mm-hmm. just gonna have our tour T-shirt there in the background. So I always、oh. say, okay, I gotta set this up. Okay, I gotta organize this. Okay, you know, <laughs> and it changes every like three or four months when my goals change. You know, or like it could be the this apparel store we launched called Practice Clothing Co. I just had the packaging of Practice Clothing on my watch、uh, on my phone, and I, I just、mm-hmm. like, okay, okay, back to work. 
<laughs> yeah, that kind of feeling. It just reminds you, you know, and you just feel a bit guilty mm. wasting time on the phone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Well, well let's get so back to music yeah. stuff, hey. At least a lot of watches. Going what on. was the... What, what were we just talking about? Uh, I'm lost as well. We were something about... You always started from horology to suits, gentleman rules, meaningful time, and then we talked about watch brands, and then, then we talked about getting being ambassadors and they kind of end up being on phones and yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened <laughs> uh, wow. yeah. great conversation so you're right now in hong kong uh yeah concert master uh could you just tell people orchestra like which orchestra is it oh it's a hong kong symphony at uh, this this orchestra i played with them in last november as a soloist we performed the corn goat concerto in the city hall in Hong Kong last year. So this year, um, the director is just out of curiosity because she knows that I, I went to Houston for a guest concert master. So okay. she was just wondering if I have interest to, to, to join them during the summer. That's awesome. And she offered a couple concert, but you know, I'm also preparing for the a really upcoming Indianapolis competition. Wow. So, so you're still in competitions. Just, That's I, awesome. I, yeah, I'm still doing competition. I don't know because competitions always really attracts me. I mean, I need a goal to practice. I'm kind of a lazy person, you know. If I don't have concert, I don't have competition. I would just rather. You're like me, though. <laughs> I'm. I'm quite similar. If I don't have any goals, I my practice motivation disappears. <laughs> yeah. It just yeah, yeah. completely. I could not. I could easily not practice for like a few days, right. for a week, just because yeah. there's no goal. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, sorry, I cut you off a competition no, concert okay. master with Hong Kong Symphony Theater, and you're in Houston. Yeah, so I, I I couldn't really do much concert. So I feel like it's it's very it's a very good chance to you know explore different country, different um, different food. I I love to eat, by the way. So, oh, yeah. you know, in Taiwan, oh. in Taiwan, they're, oh, oh. they're it's, it's like a, <laughs> a heaven of food, right? You can get everything in Taiwan. Yeah. But, uh, sometimes you need to get, get to the real, you know, authentic stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the photo you of your favorite Europe, dishes there in Taiwan. But I like, just say so the oh, listeners know, it's like Taiwan food is so, so good. I like Yeah. It. I love, I love hot pot. Oh, hot it's pot's like, when, Whenever I go back to Taiwan, like, it's like, Maybe once every two days, I had to hop out. <laughs> <laughs> What's the one? What's oh, called Heidi Lao? Do you know that one? Yeah, but it's, uh, it's from China, though. Oh, is that from China? I have no idea. Yeah, Heidi okay. Lao is from, from Shanghai, I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because Ch Chinese cuisine, there are also different kinds of hot pot in, oh, in Chinese food okay. culture. It's I actually not from Taiwan, but, but Taiwanese made it really good. Yeah. I just remember going to Taipei, and that was one of the ones I went to. Oh, Heidi Lao? Well, yeah. Which one did you go? The top floor of the near 101, the building, the shopping center. Oh, they have it there? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't, I didn't go to that one. Nice. And you get the amazing view? No, it was just inside. But it was a long wait. It was like a one hour, 90 minute wait. Like, yeah, yeah, it's always like that. You, and you have to and wait. You have to book it. Like, yeah. It's, yeah it's crazy um yeah but food is talent's good um mm. let's go back to the competition stuff it's pretty interesting so <laughs> how many competitions have you done um since? i think i've counted before uh if you count only the major ones like uh, international the ones that everybody knows probably 12 or 13 wow wow yeah. that's crazy yeah even my i, I think it's crazy <laughs> No, it's amazing though. It's like, there's so much, because I think competitions, I mean, I don't know what it's like performing at that level, but when I do competitions, there's always, it, it creates, it's like you're putting yourself into the fighting, you know, the, the fighting in, in, in the ring, in the fighting ring, boxing ring, and mm -hmm. you just have to deal with the hits and kind of calibrate everything in the moment of, of everyone's watching, everyone's under pressure. You know, everything needs to be there. Right. And it's, yeah. it's, for me, I think it's, it's such a great way to 
grow as a performer. Yes, definitely. Um, it's if anything, I would argue it's probably the quickest way to grow as a performer. Uh, uh-huh. Just jumping into the ring because that's how how I do things. You know, I, I learn it, then I kind of just dive in and then kind of see what happens and do whatever you can, right? Yeah. So, like, you obviously been a kind of in this contest for so long. Do you? Does it has it changed throughout like these twelve thirteen competitions? In terms well, of how you feel. Yeah, stage? I think so. Like okay. I started actually, Michael Kyo was my first major international competition. You okay. know? Did you know that? No, yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> I tried to I tried to submit some of the applications, but that just didn't pass. I think for I did two. I think before Michael Hill, I sent I sent two tapes, mm-hmm. but I didn't get accepted. And then Michael Hill was the first competition that I actually get to participate mm-hmm. in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. And and yeah, it was totally a very, um, how do you say, mind-blowing experience for me because, you know, when I was at Curtis, I feel like I'm nobody, really. When I first entered, it was like everybody's, you know, Ray Chan mm-hmm. or uh, um, Bella... Ben Bauman, everybody's there. Like all the, <laughs> all the famous ones yeah. were there, and I was like, oh, "Okay, I'm I'm never gonna be like them." Uh, yeah. So I was actually really um, lousy mm-hmm. during my first first year. I didn't practice much. I was having fun and mm-hmm. enjoying life. And uh, 2011 was my third year, I think. During the second year, I started to think that I should do something to yeah. to to make myself a better musician. So I tried to practice more and I asked my teacher if I could participate in competitions, but you no, know, Aaron Roseanne, Mr. Aaron Roseanne, I studied with him for five years at Curtis, the whole five years. And wow. he was like, oh, I, I don't think you're ready. So I was really um, upset during that year, And but I, I worked hard, I worked hard. And then the next year, my third year, he said, okay, you can, started to think about uh, sending tapes and, and preparing because he in, in his um, in his mind he thinks if, if you want to go to a competition you must win like if you if you don't if you don't want to win you just want to be gain the experience then you shouldn't go to a competition ah, I see yeah wow so, okay that's so interesting I, so so I started to to uh, to prepare in a, like a you know like a competition way, mm-hmm. and then since 2011 till now, I remember 2015. I I think I went to five competitions, <laughs> all major ones. <laughs> They're all major ones. You know, <laughs> let, let, me, let me let me try to recall. Five I think the year. first one was uh, Singapore. Yeah, the Singapore competition was the first one, and then I went to the Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> I went to the Tchaikovsky. And then I went to Hanover and the Sibelius. That's the five. Oh, you're, <laughs> you're like a gladiator. You're just going in. Rah, rah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's very crazy. They, do, they, do they have a competition with watches? Because that'll be interesting. I want to say, I wonder how <laughs> you go then. Like the winner will like... be the ambassador for Rolex, you know? <laughs> no, I think Rolex only picks the top of every field. It's yeah. very hard, like you know, Roger Federer. Yeah, you think Roger? Oh, Federer. they love tennis. I don't know why. Well, There's so many tennis players that are associated with Rolex. Really? Yeah. I guess the market's kind of there for watches somehow, or maybe yeah, the people so. that customers of that watch tennis really like watches. Maybe there's a correlation. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. Well, if they did like a competition, you know, it's like a AP. Violent competition. The winner gets know, <laughs> an ambassador, and then you also get your choice of AP. And then... oh, that's so nice. <laughs> I, wish. I wish there is. <laughs> yeah, is, we're gonna have to start convincing some people, guys. The, the violent competitions, just violent competitions. <laughs> Do you play with your watch on on your left or right hand? No, I I really want to do that, you know, but it's. It just hinder my my agility. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I try to do it when I practice, but still, it still just doesn't work. Because you know, I used to wear a 
leather band watch. Mm-hmm. You know, it kind of worked because it's lighter. But now I'm wearing a, a steel bracelet watch, so it's not really working. I see. <clears throat> I wonder if you can yeah. put a watch somewhere else. Like the ankle. Nah, it won't work. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it won't work. Where are at? <laughs> um, okay, so you've got more competitions coming out. You do like, Concert Master and you, you do solo gigs as well. Where do you like... Is this... I guess this is what you want to be doing or is there something else you still want to aim for, you know, over the next 10 years? Well, I'm still exploring my true love to mm-hmm. spend for the rest of my career. Mm-hmm. So I'm open to ev- any possibilities. I just did a chamber... I uh, just did two chamber concerts in t- two days. Um, oh. Last week, I think. Yeah. And I also did more... Uh, orchestra playing as a concert master, of course. Um, and also I teach. I have uh, several students in Taiwan and sometimes they they do FaceTime lessons with me when I travel around. So I like to teach too. Mm-hmm. I like to play chamber music, orchestra. I'm just trying to explore everything. Wow, your schedule sounds just crazy. I don't know. Uh, well, maybe not as crazy as you guys. Huh. Yeah, well, well, it depends. My schedule is like all over the place. It's, it's not s- <laughs> fixed. Nothing is fixed for me. So when is your next tour, actually? Um, next tour is actually starting at sep- end of September. We're going to Finland. Then we go to Germany. Nice! In and, Europe? Yeah. Well, wow. we, did our Euro- we did a Europe tour last year. Uh, covered, I think, London, wow. Warsaw, Poland, uh, Vienna... Norway. Uh, so you you have to come up with all uh, different jokes and, and different shows, right? Yeah, well, right now we just do have one. I guess the skeleton is there, the structure is there. But uh-huh. for every country, we actually change it up to fit the culture and humor. Nice. So it's that, very really tailored. Hard. It's very, I mean, it takes a lot of work. So we, you, yeah. we tend to go there and kind of do our research as fast as we can. Kind of see what clicks. Um, but what example, about the language? You use English. Do they all English, 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 yeah. We did a show in Taiwan last year, actually. That was the only yeah, one. Yeah, I know. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, what's her name? Um, Zhang Yuting. Your pianist in Taiwan. Oh, yeah. yeah she, she started to, to, to have a, a, like a comedy show now on Facebook, right? Mm-hmm. Or, or mm-hmm. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah, know I her? know her since a long time ago. Wow. That's She's so also cool. from my city. Oh, that's Taichung. so cool. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, so last year we had that. We were deciding to do English or Chinese because Taiwan people speak English as well. Like, da, da. So, oh, but our fans know we speak English. So, we, mm-hmm. that was uh, 50 50, I'd say. I'd say, actually, no, I'd probably say like 70% English, 30% Mandarin. Mm-hmm. That still worked out fine. Yeah, I think. Are you planning to go to China? China? Um, not anytime soon, I don't think. But I because oh, I think I think it will be really popular. Oh yeah, in China. We, Your we, show. We we have our um, social media setting up kind of Weibo. Oh, nice. Believe believe the Chinese social medias. Um, yeah. But yeah. it's definitely on us like foresight. We, we do uh-huh. want to get to China. I think it will really relate to them. It's just mm-hmm. I still think there's a lot of things we still don't understand yet mm-hmm. about China because it's a whole other world online anyway. Right. <coughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're going to Europe, and then we're going to the States, actually, later this year, from October, mid-October till early December. Nice. Where are you going? New York. Um, and we have, in Maryland, a concert there with, I think it's School Orchestra. And New York is just, we, we're doing it ourselves. Then we go to Toronto and Canada. Then we go wow, to, nice. hopefully, Seattle, and then San uh-huh. Francisco, and then LA. And then also Palo Altos near San Francisco with another orchestra. Uh-huh. Wait, Palo Altos? Yeah. Do you know that area? Oh, yeah. I, I, I visit there several times, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know what's... Like, I've never nice. been to the States. Um, it's like uh, all the rich people are there, like uh, computer engineers. You know, Google. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so random. Yeah. Okay. Google, Apple. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I have a good friend, sort of a sponsor, lives there. So so I kind of visit there. That's cool. Yeah. But, yeah. Do you, so, have, a, do you yeah. have a manager? 
No, do, everyone do asks us that. We do everything ourselves. That's why. Wow, lives. that's amazing. That's that's really amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that's why our lives are a bit hectic. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, from everything from like, because we did a crowdfunding campaign last year. Um, oh. To kickstart this tour, because we needed it's a, a lot of money, right? To book venues, flights, accommodation, just it's hectic. Mm -hmm. So we did a kick oh. crowdfunding campaign last year. So raised, I mean, it was just enough. It's not enough, but enough to get us going. And so we nice. we just work purely off ticket sales, mm -hmm. and then we just reinvest everything we have into the next show and the next year, and kind of just keep going. Uh huh. Next year, what's what's gonna be on the shirt? On the show? Oh, the, oh! I thought you said shirt. Oh no, no! I said the next show. Kind of go into the next shows, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, but actually, it'll be cool. Actually, I'll ask you later. But I'm interested to see if there's a venue in Houston. Hmm. Perhaps I don't know. You might have some recommendations. Well, I have to. I have to. I, I have to go to one of the, your shows. Yeah, you should totally. Show. Are you gonna be there yeah. in the states? When are you going to New York? Uh, New York will be the 31st of October. 30. I think I might be there. That will be cool. Yeah, well, no. where are you performing? Uh, the Merkin Hall. Oh, nice. I think I'll, I'll be able to go, I think. Awesome. Let me know. I'll yeah. Yeah. Get you a ticket. Oh, um, no, no. I'll, I'll buy one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what the ticket my sales are. Up. It's, it's oh, uh, I'm like, oh, ticket sales is another problem. I was like, come on, we gotta get the ticket sales up. I need to know. Because ah. <laughs> the last thing you want is hosting yeah. a concert and there's no one, no ticket sales. That's just oh, disaster. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, different problems. Um, yeah. Okay, let's just. Let me think. How do you practice? <laughs> so random. Like, um do you, okay yeah. so i always yeah. do i what no go on go on that's fine well i i usually when i practice for a famous piece like i usually hear listen to cds first i, I know it's it's a very contradictive yeah. way but i like to know the piece before i actually learn it that's that's the way i learn mm -hmm. I, I think it's it's a habit from from uh from my uh, childhood, I think, because you know, my as I said, my father is a big fan of classical music, and mm -hmm. he collects almost seven thousand or maybe more CDs. Wow! <laughs> yeah, you know, in my in my house, there is a room audio room, and all the walls are f are covered by CDs. No way! That's so cool. Yeah. So so he used to like gave gave me homeworks that I have to pick a certain piece and he'll pick all his collections, like all the different recordings, different uh, versions of the, the piece and he will give it to me and I have to make a chart and to, you know, kind of be a judge to to judge all different recordings. Sound wise, a solo is how, how they play, mm -hmm. how's the technique, how's mm -hmm. the musicality and how's the orchestra doing and, and also the collaboration everything i have to analyze every cds every every recordings for a certain piece piece yeah so that's how i learned um uh, all the concertos especially back back when i was maybe eight or ten i see maybe a little bit older yeah, yeah so so that's still the habit for me now i try to listen to as many versions as i can uh -huh. Especially now we have YouTube, so everything is so convenient. I even listen to my colleagues, like competition fellows, fellow com competitors, uh -huh. recording. And I tried to know the piece better before I start, started the piece. And I think I'm, I'm quite a fast learner, I think. Usually because I train my practicing during, during my years at Curtis. Because you know, Mr. Roseanne, he he try he tends to teach very fast. Like every week, we have we, almost every week we we have to have a different program Come on. for the lesson. <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah, I you guys are just functioning at a different level. I didn't know what's going on. I'm just like, whoa, a new piece every week. Fuck, it's too much. Yeah. Oh, wow. He likes to teach teach everything very fast, but but it's not like we go through everything without any details. Yeah. I mean, he talks very detailed. Mm -hmm. But 
just we have to learn fast and we have to every piece has to be memorized that's yeah. this uh, <laughs> concept even sonatas even we sonatas yeah yep yeah. i got in trouble once for memorizing a sonata on a recital oh shoot really yeah i just i think it was the, it was the beethoven and seven sonata i still remember i play a, the, the c minor one i believe yeah because I, uh-huh. like, yeah. I had this thing with myself where I had to memorize all the pieces that I play. Like I don't know why, it's just like a little goal. Teachers never uh-huh. really expected. I was like, I just want to. I just hate the idea of a stand. Uh, and then I did yeah. the sonata without a stand, and like, Brett, you need a stand to know. To kind of, <laughs> it's a piano and violin sonata. It's not a violin solo. I'm, oh god, okay. Sorry, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> well, somebody told me that in Queen. Queen Elizabeth competition too. Really? Like, yeah. So, so I was eliminated. In, in, I forgot maybe the second round. Oh, because and then, didn't you, you, and then the oh, what? Yeah, and and one of the judges told me that oh, you have to have a stand. It's you. It's disrespectful to the pianist. Oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, probably it's true. It's a tradition. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's not, I'm not trying to be, be to be disrespectful or anything like that. Just sometimes. I feel like I can explore the music or, or express the music even more sincere without the music, you know? Yeah. Like without actually looking at the music. Yeah. 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 I know, yeah, that's true. It's it's different. It's interesting. How, it's also interesting where the tradition came from, but that's a whole other topic for someone that's gone into the whole research of that because mm. I have no clue. Um, mm-hmm. Cool. Uh, look, I'm just going to ask you a few random questions before we end. Uh, sure. What? Oh, is there? This is a good one. Do you? Is there? Is there something you disagree with right now that's currently like, trending in the classical music industry? Disagree. Mm. Or not feeling quite like this is the right thing or something. Yeah. Well. When you mention it, yeah, I have kind of thought of a, but you know, during competitions, you know, there are always uh, teachers in the jury. Oh, that's that the worst. That thing is really bothering me. Because yeah. Nowadays, people start to notice that competitions are not that fair in a way. Mm-hmm. So people, so all the competitions, they're like, oh, okay, so we can, we will pop, pop publicize, we yeah. will publicize our score. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like you know, when, when I. When I first started competitions, nobody does that. But now, now the Shanghai competition did it, and also which one? Um, I forgot. Oh, the Vinyovsky I just did uh, mm-hmm. two years ago. They mm-hmm. also, they also show the public the the score. Did it help? But you know, it doesn't. No, it doesn't really help because yeah. it doesn't change the result. Yeah. And you know, music is really, um, it's, subjective. Yeah. Thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So you can always make up any uh, any excuse to 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 score somebody really low mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. just say you don't like his interpretations or it's just a wrong style of Bach the wrong style of blah 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 yeah but you know what what's wrong what's right there, there's no there's that's no, it's uh, not absolute yeah <laughs> it's so hard to kind of mediate that okay yeah so I think I think this jury is the teacher of somebody saying this is I, I really don't like it because you know for during my competition career none of any 12 or 13 competitions i went to was it, there was my teacher i get my teacher was never in the jury when i went to competition mm-hmm. so yeah that's true I, I mean i would feel annoyed as well to be honest if it's because okay they say they're going to be no bias but there's got to be some sort of degree of biases even, even though the adjudicators are trying to not be biased uh, yeah they've already taught yeah, yeah. the student the way they want it to be so naturally inclined that's, yeah that's, that's that's my point yeah they're, because you want to be fair but your students play the way you wanted yeah so the music to be so of course you think that's better yeah exactly so it's yeah. it doesn't really solve the problem i don't know and then like <laughs> everyone's kind of all kind of the same connected the same thing blah, blah, blah. oh well cool no, I'm with you on that yeah. one. I kind of, I think there needs to be a better system mm-hmm. on it, but I don't know how, or if anyone's yeah. actually looking to it, how to fix this problem. Anyway, another question is, um, you're 27 now? 27? 
Just turned 27, yes. Okay. So what, if you're looking, actually, I want to flip this around. What do you think your, what advice do you think your 40-year-old self would give you right now? 40? Yeah. You, you mean when, I, when I'm 40? Yeah, the 40-year-old Richard. Mm. Looking at you when you're That's 27. <laughs> <laughs> I love this question. It's just such a... <laughs> so, oh. so. I don't know. Because I, I really cannot imagine where I would be when, I was 40, when I'm 40. Hmm. I guess... Practice harder. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, there's always, there always um, more degree that you can work on right yeah, I don't know. yeah. Um, well but but if I would do if I would change anything for my past I, I would think that I should make more friends actually because uh, like uh, during my years at school or even now I rarely go to um, any festivals like music you no know, during summer because I always went home in Taiwan to, to be with my spend time with my parents I see like that yeah. so I really I re rarely go to any music festivals and mm -hmm. so I feel like the connection I need is not enough now mm -hmm. I think like I, I would love to meet more friends and more teachers more soloists to get more connected mm-hmm mm -hmm. yeah. I see okay um, cool that's cool anyway I think we'll wrap it up there. I mean, thanks for jumping on the podcast. Mm -hmm. Oh, where can people find you? Facebook. Cool. I have a page in, on Facebook, yeah. and I, I really need a uh, need a official website. I think. Oh, you don't have I one just yet. Don't know how to get? I don't have one. Oh, I highly recommend yeah, you get one. Uh, yeah. Actually, well, we'll you have talk, Facebook. Talk about it later. Facebook. Is, <laughs> Facebook I have Facebook. Yeah. Facebook is really good. So. Anyway, but I okay. feel like people are now moving to Instagram. Yeah, Instagram as well. That's where. Well, that's yeah. <laughs> I, yeah I don't. I don't. I don't really use Instagram either. Yeah, yeah. So. Cool, cool. All right. Well, yeah. thank you so much for jumping on the podcast, and I hope you can find your Facebook guys. You should listen to Richard perform because he's really just an extraordinary performer. Go watch his concerts. And once again, thank, thank you. you for listening to the podcast. Please subscribe and like, do whatever, and I will see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.